time today. Stand to your feet and welcome my friend Jen Gottlieb. <laughs> One more time for my mentor, Randy Garn. Please give it up. That was like magical. I don't know where he went, but he better be in the front row in a minute. There he is. They're giving it up for you, Randy. So one thing about Randy, okay, you can sit down. I'm not gonna make you stand anymore. One thing about Randy that I love is the way he showed up on this stage yes. is the way he shows up at seven in the morning. <laughs> we were in the Uber and he was like, let's go. Shannon, the Uber driver, like, let's go. And he shows up like that every single second of every single day. No wonder he's as successful as he is because he doesn't just think about showing up in a certain way. He doesn't just visualize himself waking up tomorrow and being this person. He is it. Yes, he is it in every moment of his life. And I want to invite all of you to start experimenting with that, with being the person that you wanna be right now. You guys learned a lot of amazing stuff today. Give it up for Ken and all the incredible speakers he had on this stage. You learned a lot of amazing stuff. You got a lot of stuff floating around in your brains. You probably got a lot of stuff in your notebooks, maybe in your phones, wherever you keep that stuff. You know, it's, it's floating around. But what if you just put that aside and you said, okay, I'm going to step into that person right now. How would you sit? Would you sit differently? How would you look at me? Yes, I like that. Would, would your body language change? Would your energy change? How about your vibration? Do you feel a different vibration in your body? Can you feel it? Yes. yes. I feel it from you guys. So if I'm on the stage and I start saying something that you kind of like and you're feeling it, instead of just writing it down and taking notes, maybe I say, oh, yes or yes. And then you say, wait, what? One more time. Yes or yes. Or you could go even further. You guys with me? Are you still with me? Okay. Hear me out. If I say something that resonates with you today, instead of writing it down or tapping the person next to you, be like, oh, I really like that, or taking a picture and like sharing it on Instagram, you could share it on Instagram, Andy, that's cool. But maybe you could stand up and be like, hell yeah, Jen, I love that. <laughs> Who wants to try? What's my best friend right now? <laughs> let's go, let's go. I love it. Okay, so let's start being that now. So, all right, we're going to go on a journey together for about 47 seconds. Can I have you for 47 seconds? Yes? Okay, amazing. Because the 47 seconds that we're about to do together might just change the rest of your life. I know. Everybody close your eyes for me. Take a deep breath. And exhale. We're going to travel through time together right now. So... We are at the Create Summit 2023. It is one year from now. And you walk through those doors knowing that you have accomplished that big, hairy, audacious goal. You created that thing, that thing that you've been wanting to create your entire life. You did it. And you walk into these doors and you see all of your friends and you see your colleagues and everybody that you met at the summit 2022 and they are high-fiving you. They are congratulating you. They said, oh my God, you did it. And you feel a new swagger. You feel a new confidence. Feel that with me right now. Breathe into that. Take a deep breath. And open your eyes. I want you to take out your notebook or whatever you're taking notes with and I want you to write down what you created. What did you create? What was that big thing you created when you walked into that room? Knowing I did it. What'd you create? Let's go, an orphanage in Africa. What'd you create? What'd you create? Let's go. One more. Brandy, what'd you create? The largest leadership institute. And so it is. Okay, so for the next 30 minutes, 
I'm gonna teach you guys how to create that thing so we can all come here next year and celebrate together. Are you down? Let's go, let's go. Okay, so normally I'm like, Randy, I have the clicker. Oh, yes, we are a team. We're gonna do this. We can move on to the next one. Uh, we're gonna talk about the creation process, five steps to turning thoughts into things and creating the life of our dreams. Because at the end of the day, every single thing that you're looking at right now started out as a thought. This event, this was a thought in Ken's mind. And now it's a thing. So that thing that you were just thinking about, that you created, that visualization that you just did, that feeling that you just had when you walked into that room with all that oh, fun, that confidence, hell yeah, I did it. That was a thought. And we're gonna turn it into a thing now, cool. All right, next slide. So when I was about seven years old, maybe six, I was in this show. I was a performer, a dancer, singer, all the things. And there was this moment in the show where they had us stand in a line and each one of us stood forward in the line. We stepped out of the line and we looked out at the audience and we were supposed to say our name and what we wanted to be when we grew up. So I remember stepping forward and looking out and feeling the lights on my body and saying, hi, I'm Jenny Gottlieb. And when I grow up, I wanna be a Broadway star. And the crowd went crazy and I was looking out, I saw my mom and my dad and I thought, oh my God, this is it. There is nothing better than this right now. This is what I wanna do for the rest of my life. Has anybody ever had a moment like that when they were a kid? before the conditioning happened, before people came in and told you you can't do that or you should do it this way or you should look this way or you should have something else or you should wear those shoes or drive that car. Anybody have a moment like that before that all happened? Raise your hand high. So I followed that and you can go to the next slide. I moved to New York City and I got my dream role in a Broadway national tour, which I'll tell you about later. And then I kept going and I followed that and I came back home and I go to the next slide. Then I booked this role on this heavy metal talk show for 14 seasons where I got to interview rock stars. And you may look at that slide right now and think, wow, that girl's pretty damn cool. And if you were to look at my Instagram or my Facebook or my social media during that time, you would have thought, wow, she's got the perfect life because I made it look like I had the perfect life. Uh, but this time in my life was actually a time when I lost that little girl, where I started to try to look like the person that I needed to look like, act like the person that I needed to act like in order to be loved by the fans, the followers, the directors, the casting directors, all of the people that said that I needed to be this way in order to be good enough, and I completely and totally lost myself. So while you saw all the sparkly filtered photos, the thing that people didn't see was my severe bulimia, my addiction to Adderall, I was up partying all night long, I was in a toxic relationship with a guy that was cheating on me, and I was stuck completely out of alignment and I couldn't get back in. And sometimes when you're out of alignment and you can't get yourself back in, the universe or God will come in and smack you back into alignment and a lot of the times it will hurt, yes or yes? Yes, yes or yes? Or sometimes shit has to happen for the shift to happen. So, go to the next slide. This photo, uh, again, a great example of highlight reels on Instagram, why you should never compare your life to anybody else's highlight reel because you don't really know what's going on. Because during this photo shoot, it, look, it looks like I'm like all glamorous and doing a photo shoot. I think my hashtag was like alive, passion. I was hiding my face in that photo because I spent the night before on my bathroom floor crying and binging and purging. Because that night I found out that my boyfriend was cheating on me with our best friend. And I had to go from living in my million dollar apartment with him to, uh, you can go to the next slide, moving into this tiny little room in an apartment with six other actors and a window that faced a wall. To top it off, that day I found out my TV show got canceled. So I had no career, I had no boyfriend, I had no money. 
and I had no connections and I had lost myself. And I remember looking out that window <laughs> every single day, had this journal. I knew nothing about personal development, by, by the way, at this time, like absolutely nothing. All I, I was like an actress and I had this journal and someone told me that I should write in a journal and I looked out the window and I was like, okay, one day I'll know why this happened. And I just wrote down every single day, one day I'll know why this happened, one day I'll know why this happened. And it's the only thing that got me through. And every single time I wrote down, one day I'll know why this happened, that little girl started to come back to me. That little girl that, that stood up on the stage and felt the lights and, and thought this was it. And so I dove into personal development. I dove into figuring out who I was and I was like, okay, I have to show up as me. I have to do this. I have absolutely no other choice. So I stopped selling my socks on the internet. I did. And, and I became a personal trainer because I wanted to help people. And I decided I wanted to start a business. So I start training people, I start creating these online programs, I start doing the thing, I start realizing who I really am, and I start feeling really amazing because I was helping other humans instead of just obsessing over how blonde my hair was. It was awesome. <laughs> and then you can go to the next slide. I met uh, this woman, her name's Angela. Randy, you know Angela. She's awesome. And uh, I, she, I was actually, she was one of my clients. So Ken said, you're, you're one relationship away from changing your life. I was actually two relationships away from changing my life. And Angela was this big time publicist at this big PR firm in New York City. And I mean, she looked like she was crushing it. She was like career woman. And we became really fast friends. And Angela was like, Jen, you have to use the media to start changing the narrative because everybody knows you as this heavy metal girl, but you're really awesome as like a personal trainer and like fitness person. I'm like, Hell yeah, let's do it. So Angela and I started leveraging the media. We started getting me on TV. We started getting me in publications. We started changing the story through media. And she taught me everything that I needed to know about how to pitch the media, how to get in the media, how to leverage it, and how to build a multi six figure business in a very short amount of time, which is exactly what I did. And I wanted to pay Angela back because Angela was like really helping me, but she was secretly miserable again. Highlight reels. You would have thought that she had it all together. She was secretly miserable. She hated her job. She was up all night, every night, working for people that didn't give a shit about her. And I was like, Aunt, I'm really into personal development right now. And there is this personal development event going on, and I want you to come with me. It was Lewis House's event. So I was like, I will pay for you. Just come with me to this event, just like what you guys are doing right now trying to better ourselves. So we go to this event, and we sit there, and the speaker on stage, has us do the same exercise that I had you guys just do. And they had us close our eyes, and she was like, visualize your perfect day. If you could have absolutely anything that you want, what would it be? And I closed my eyes, and Angela and I were like holding each other's hands, and we had our eyes closed, and we were so excited to do this exercise. And I'm like, okay, what do I see? And I opened my eyes, and the speaker says, okay, turn to your friend next to you and tell them what you saw. We can go to the next slide. So I was like, and I, I'm in a power couple. I'm like Jay-Z and Beyonce. And then I'm kind of like a touch of Tony Robbins. Like I get to be on stage and I get to help people and like be a motivational speaker. And then also I get to like sing and dance and be a rock star, kind of like Britney Spears. That was my perfect day. That would be everything to me. And she's like, amazing. And I'm like, great. What's your perfect day? She looks at me, she goes, I'm a boss. I don't work for this PR agency anymore. I run my own firm. I work for people who care about me. I make a difference on this planet and I make a lot of money doing it. I'm like, amen, sister. So we leave that event. I'll skip around a bit, but we're gonna get back to the story. You can go to the next slide because I met my Jay-Z. <laughs> His name's Chris Winfield, and you can go to the next slide. And together, we decided to take all of the knowledge that I gained with Angela using PR and media to connect entrepreneurs to the media and help them get their message out there. And we created Super Connector Media, which is PR done differently. And now we represent some of the biggest personal brands in the world, some of the biggest companies, and we have an agency, and we get their messages out there. But it gets so much better. Because guess who runs our agency? Angela! Angela, living her best life. So we can go to the next slide now because it's enough about me. I want to teach you guys. Well, I'm, I'm going to teach you through my truth. 
So I'm not gonna tell you anything up here that's like something that's like I'm giving you advice or I know it all because I'm still figuring it out. I don't know all of it, but I do know my truth and I do know my story and I do know some crazy things that have happened to me and I'm going to teach you how to create that crazy, scary, audacious goal that you wrote down in five steps through one of my favorite stories. So you can go to the next one. When I was about 20 years old, let's back up a little bit. I moved to New York City to become an actress, right? I dropped out of college. I was like, screw this. I'm going to go and I'm going to do it. I'm going to be a performer. Let's go. <laughs> and the first show that I went and I saw when I moved to New York City was The Wedding Singer. Anybody here see the movie The Wedding Singer? Raise your hands high. Yes. Okay. I sat there in the audience. Uh, by the way, I was like in the nosebleed section. I didn't have any money. I couldn't afford to... Um, to sit in a good seat and I'm like in the nosebleed section with my friend Pat and we're sitting there and you can go to the next slide and we saw this actress named Felicia Finley play the role of Linda on the stage. When that woman walked onto the stage it was like heavens parted and God came down and God said to me you need to play that part. Like legit I had goosebumps everywhere I turned to my friend and I said Pat I'm gonna play this role and he's like okay Jen whatever. Like we're in the nosebleed section of the Broadway. Like I'm in school. We're running around. I live in literally like an eight foot by eight foot apartment in a twin bed, bunk bed. He's like, okay. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to play this part one day. So during that time, my mom had given me this book called The Secret. Anybody read The Secret? Yeah. Okay. So I'm reading this book and I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of, I don't really necessarily believe in this. This is like a little too woo woo for me. It's a little too much, but like, I believe it maybe a little bit. So I started reading it. I got a little curious and I turned on the TV and I saw Oprah on TV talking about the secret and saying that she manifested her role in the color purple. And I'm like, okay, maybe I can get on board with Oprah. Oprah's, Oprah knows what she's talking about. So I thought I was going to do like an experiment. I was like, okay, if this stuff's real, let's try it. I'm going to manifest something. And I'm reading the book and the book says, why don't you try to manifest a pen? Like start really small. I'm like, screw a pen. I'm going to manifest Broadway. Okay. So I did all the things that the book told me to do. Legit. So the first step in the creation process, and you guys can take notes if you want, or you can just listen to me, or you can just keep, keep being with me right here. I see you. You can go to the next slide. So step one is to see it. Every single night before I went to bed, I would close my eyes and I would visualize myself playing Linda. I would see the costume on my body. I would see all of the lights in the theater and the audience, and I would sing myself to sleep. I would see it so clearly that it became real. Because here's the thing, you guys, the subconscious mind does not know the difference between a real memory and a fake one. It doesn't know it. So if you can see what you really want, you can actually start to physically feel the feelings and actually start to believe it. And what happens is the law of attraction is not this magical thing that like you envision it and then oh poof, it, it arrives. What it does is it makes the fear a lot less when you start to walk towards the thing because the subconscious is like, oh, I already did that. I already did that, duh, that's easy. Or it just becomes neon lights that points you into the direction that you need to go. And so that moved me into step two, which is to believe it. Because I visualized this and I saw it so clearly, I saw it so clearly that it was there that I started believing it. And I started walking around my musical theater school being like, I'm Melinda and the wedding singer. And every time I had to do songs for our like demos in musical theater school, your tests or songs, I would sing the Linda music and I would pretend that I was performing on Broadway. It was just like a real thing in my body and in my soul. But here's the thing, you can see it and you can believe it all day long, you guys. But if you don't, do what? Do it. do it. Nothing happens. You can do anything that you want, but you have to take action. You can't just dream big. Dreaming big is awesome. And I love it when people tell you to dream big, but dreams happen when you're sleeping. Thinking big is also good. We like to think big. But what if we just said, screw dreaming big and screw thinking big, and we just started doing big? 
I had to do big. So here's the thing, this is what happened. The neon lights presented themselves. I'm in musical theater school. I have this thing called Backstage. It was like, by right now it's on the internet, but then it was like this like newspaper. And I saw in the newspaper the audition for the Broadway national tour of The Wedding Singer. Okay, here we go. I'd never auditioned for a Broadway show before ever in my life, but I'm like, this is it, we're going. I get dressed up in my Linda-esque outfit. I walk into this audition. There's like 500 other girls that look exactly like me. And I go in and I sing and I get called back. I'm like, oh shit, okay. I go in and I sing, I get called back, I get called back, I get called back, I keep going. And like dwindling down, there's like no girls left. And then it's like me and one other girl. Her name was Nika Wall. She was so tall and so beautiful. And she would go in and I would have to hear her like singing for, you know, through the wall. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I would go in, then she would go, it was like American Idol on steroids. And so they did that thing where they're like, okay, we'll call you, we'll call you. I'm like, uh, okay. So I go home and I'm waiting for my phone call and I find out through the grapevine that, you can go to the next slide. Nika got the part, not me. But here's the thing, I wasn't that upset because I had tricked my mind, my subconscious to believe that this was a reality for me and it just wasn't happening yet, which is why I created step 3.5. You cannot just do it once. You cannot just do it once, my friends. You have to do it again and again and again and again and sometimes again and again and again and again and again. John Maxwell is up here saying that if you're not failing, you are not doing anything, basically. If I just got it then, I wouldn't be standing up here talking to you. Yes, thank you, it's so true. You have to keep going, you can't just stop. And, and I know none of you are sitting here because you stopped when someone said no to you the first time, yes or yes? Yes. So what did I have to do? I had to get creative. So I got creative and I, found out that a different director was going to be doing the Broadway national tour of The Wedding Singer, but he was auditioning the show Footloose. I'm like, screw Footloose. So what I did was something that can get you canceled in musical theater world. I'm just gonna let you know. You can get canceled if you do this. I snuck into the audition for Footloose without an appointment, dressed up as Linda. I was like, I'm gonna go into this audition and I'm gonna sing the Linda music and he's just gonna be like, you, I want you for wedding singer. Screw Footloose. It's all gonna work out. It's gonna be so great. So I go into this audition. My friends, my family, my teachers, they're like, you're an idiot, don't do that. And I'm like, I don't care, I have nothing else to lose. I believed so fully that this was mine, that I had to do anything. And this is why I said, you guys, bet on yourself. Bet on yourself, go for it. So I go in, I sing the Linda music at the Footloose audition. I go back into the holding room. The director comes out of the audition room, comes into the holding room, he points at me, he goes, you, come here. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so screwed. He's like, I'm not casting wedding singer right now, but here's my card. Keep in touch with me. I'm like, oh, I have the golden ticket. This card, this is, you guys, if somebody gives you the golden ticket, you better not throw that away. You better not put it, you better follow up. I followed up with that man for six months. I emailed him once a week for six months. I said, hey Seth, how you doing? I got a dog today, you wanna see a picture? He's so cute. He never responded to me, but I kept emailing him. I said, I was practicing today, I'm putting in the work, I went to dance class, just writing him all these letters. He was like my friend in my head that never responded to me. <laughs> so finally, I get an email. They bring me back into audition, and again and again and again and again, and then finally, I get another email. Oh, so many emails. I wish I still had these emails. I don't. Congratulations. We want to invite you to join the cast of the Broadway national tour of The Wedding Singer. Roll, hold. Ensemble slash Linda understudy. We can go to the next slide. So for two months, I played that girl in the show. 
So you know that feeling when you do something or when you open up a magazine or when you turn on social media or the television and you see somebody that is doing the thing that you know that you could do better? And you feel that feeling in your gut and you're like, oh my God, that should be me? Yes? Okay, well, let that feeling guide you and let that feeling lift you up and be grateful for that person because that person is showing you exactly how you need to show up because I wore that fat suit and I danced in that show for two months but you better believe that I stood in the wings and I watched that girl every single move that she made because I knew that the second that I got that opportunity I was going to get up on that stage and I was going to crush it and I was going to fully go to the next slide receive it because if you don't receive the gifts that the universe and God is giving you, they are not going to give you those gifts anymore. You have to step into it. You have to receive it. And so when I got the call from Seth, there was no more emails. He called me and he said, Jen, when we go out on the big, the we went on the big tour, we put up the show for two months and I played the fat lady. But when we went out on the big tour, he said, I'm going to change it. And I want you to be Linda. Thank you. And when I stood on that stage and I sang that song for the first time and I saw the audience and I saw the lights and I felt the costume, Felicia Finley's exact costume on my body. It was the exact same visual that I saw in my little twin bed in my eight by eight room years before. You guys want to see something crazy? You can go. That's Felicia and that's me. And I remember walking backstage and I collapsed on the ground and I said, Jenny, anything that you want, you can create. You have to see it. You have to believe it. You have to do it and you have to do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again sometimes. And then you can receive it. But here's the thing. Yeah, I'll take it, Ken. I'll take it. But wait, there's another step. And I added this step because I needed this step. You can go to the next slide. You have to repeat it because here's the thing. How many of you, and I want you to raise your hands high if you resonate with this, you start doing the thing, whatever that thing is, maybe it's meditating, maybe it's working out, maybe it's taking sales calls, maybe it's um, showing up differently and you start doing it and you start getting great results and everything's working and then all of a sudden for some reason you stop. Raise them high. Okay, this is called the upper limit. And we all have this thermostat set. And when we get a little too successful, it feels a little too scary. So we're like, oh, I'm going to bring myself back down so that I can just stay at a place where I feel comfortable because that feels a little bit scary. So that I ended up, as I told you in the beginning, looking at a brick wall. Because all that wedding singer stuff, that happened before I had my breakdown. I forgot. I sabotaged myself. I stopped. So now when I self-sabotage, there is one thing that I say, and I'm going to give it to you right now because everyone goes through this where we self-sabotage. I still do it all the time. I find myself bringing myself back down. I find myself taking my foot off the gas pedal sometimes. And I think the reason that I do that is I'm like, mm, if it gets too good, the other shoe's going to drop and something bad's going to happen, right? Or I'm going to jinx it. It can't be that good, right? It can't be that good. Have you ever said that before? Yeah, it's gonna, something bad's going to happen. Well, what if we said this? How much better can it get? Let's go. How much more can I receive? Wait a minute. Why does it have to get bad? Why do we have to lose something? What if it could just keep getting better and better and better? So I sat at that event with Angela holding her hand and I saw my Jay-Z, my Beyonce, my Britney Spears, Tony Robbins fantasy. The whole thing was happening for me. And I'm like, you know what? How much fucking better can it get? So I went home and I went for a run. Randy, I like to get my ideas when I run too. And I went for a run. I'm like, what is my guy like? My Jay-Z, what is he like? And I started to, to get to know this guy on this run. Not what my parents, my Jewish parents want my guy to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I want him to be, what is he like? And I met him and I went home and I ran home and I opened up a magazine and I pulled out a picture of a guy, of the back of a guy's head and I put it on a vision board and I started writing down all the qualities that my guy had. I was like, I'm going to create this guy just like I created my role in The Wedding Singer. I can do this. I have the power to create stuff. So you can go to the next slide. So that's the guy that I cut out of the magazine. I don't know. He was holding a baby and looking at the rainforest. I don't know. It was just the back of a guy's head. I was like, this is great. Okay. 
put it on my vision board, and then I wrote down all the things about him, a few things. Oh man, this is, this is a real, I really wrote this and I'm being very vulnerable showing this to you right now. Um, I, I don't know, he's a good person, he has to live on the Upper West Side, he's six feet tall, he's an entrepreneur, he's into personal development, he has a child, he doesn't drink. I got clear, I knew who he was. And then every single day, I would talk to him. So this is the believing part. Because I remember the way that I, the way that I really got into the belief with, with Linda and the wedding singer was by actually being in it. Not just thinking about it, but being in the feeling. So in order to be in the feeling, to manifest my man, I had to actually have a relationship with him. So I was like, hi, my love. I'm wearing my red dress today. If you see me, just come say hi. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to create an empire with you. I can't wait to work with you. I can't wait to help people with you. I can't wait to speak on stages with you. And I would write him letters and I would talk to him all the time. And this really helped, ladies. If you're single or gentlemen, if you're single, because all the bad dates, the wrong guys that I would go on dates with, I'd be like, oh, <laughs> you're not him. I talk to him every day. Come on. That's not you. Come on. So moving on. There was another part of this visualization of this, this fantasy life that I had. Not fantasy, it was real to me. Um, so me and vision board guy, we were going to live in this building that I was obsessed with in Manhattan. It was on uh, 200 West 72nd Street was the address, is the address, it's still there, on 72nd Street and Broadway on the Upper West Side. And I used to train my clients there when I was a personal trainer. And I would walk into this building and I remember telling the doormen, I'm going to live here one day. And they'd be like, okay, Jen, go up in the elevator and go to the gym and go train your clients. <laughs> they would laugh at me. But I knew that me ooh, and vision board guy were going to live in one of these apartments with floor to ceiling windows. And I was going to look over West 72nd Street. And I wasn't going to be a trainer anymore. And I was going to be helping people in a big way. And we were going to have a business. And I was going to be looking down at the people walking up and down 72nd Street at 5 in the morning instead of being that person walking up and down 72nd Street at 5 o'clock in the morning. So... You can go to the next slide. I would sit in my little studio apartment. That was my adorable little Upper West Side studio apartment. And I would look out those little windows and I would be in that apartment with the floor to ceiling windows. And I would talk to my man and I would create this memory in my mind as if it was real. And when Chris Winfield and I moved into my dream apartment at 200 West 72nd Street, you can go to the next slide, and I actually looked out my windows and saw this and felt that pure joy as I looked out and I looked at the people walking on the street at five o'clock in the morning and it wasn't me. I was like, I did it again. God is so good. So here's something even crazier. Are you guys ready for this? So when we moved into the apartment, <laughs> Chris was standing looking out the window and he was holding my dog. And I remember somebody said to me, when, when you're manifesting or when you're creating the life that you want, always remember that it's either this or something better. So it's not necessarily the exact thing that you're thinking about because God might come in and show you something even better that you didn't even know existed. And you have to be willing to receive it. So Chris is standing there looking out the window and I'm like, wow, that looks really familiar. I took a photo and then I went and I found my vision board guy. You can go to the next slide. So for me, a dog is way better than a baby. That's my baby. And New York City is way better than the rainforest. And, uh, Chris looks a lot cuter than that guy. <laughs> so this or something better. And if you want to go to the next slide, this was the original vision that I had with Angela. So you guys all did your original visions when you sat here, the thing that you want to create. And I was like, mm, I'm going to be in my power couple and I'm going to be like Britney Spears. I'm going to be like Tony Robbins and it's going to be so amazing. But you guys, it is, it is so much better. And as my, one of my favorite quotes of all time is the Steve Jobs quote. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down and it has made all the difference in my life. That's what he said. 
Because if you would have told me when I was staring out that window when my entire life fell apart and my platinum blonde hair was breaking and I had no idea who I was, that I would have created that exact vision and I would be standing up here talking to you guys and all the dots connected the way they did. I could tell you, you're, you're crazy. But looking backwards, it always makes sense, right? It always makes sense when you look backwards. And if you can trust and know that the dots will always connect in your future when you're in the shit, you will always be okay. So you can go to the next slide. Oh, you did it already. <laughs> so that's my version of my creation. So what I want to ask you right now, I'm gonna ask you again, what do you wanna create? Because I promise you, you guys, and I say this from my heart, I'm literally just talking to you as your friend right now. If you see it, and then you believe it, and then most importantly, you, and then you, again, and again, and again, and again, and then you receive it, and then you keep repeating that shit, and you don't ever stop until you get what you want. You can create anything that you want. I'm so grateful that I got to share my story with you. And I can't wait to see you in 2023 and everything that you create. I'm Jen. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I didn't even have to ask him this thing, but... Come on, guys, Jen Gottlieb, put your hands together. Come on, how amazing was that? Randy, she was better than you said she was. <laughs> hey, guys, how many of you guys, day one in the books, how many of you guys had a great time? Come on, Jen Gottlieb, one more.